Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. Today we are going to fire up the grill. We're gonna get some new paint on it, some new letters on it, and some new rubber too. Now all we need is some burgers. Okay, here's everything we're gonna to need to restore the engine deck lid from 914 rubber. This is a special paint that they've mixed up, which is really close to OEM, if not exact. Uh, it's a lacquer blend, I guess. My car has a 1974, so it's getting the silver letters. Those are correct for that year. These are the speed nuts for holding the silver letters on. This is the engine deck lid welting, which is kind of a T-shaped rubber piece that goes between the grill itself and the painted part. Uh, this here is the engine deck lid protection. This is the textured stuff that kind of looks like wind lace. Uh, goes right along the edges. And then I splurged and got a new engine deck lid catch. Mine works, but I just like the fact that this is new and shiny. <laughs> and 914 rubber had it, so very cool. Let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is get the grill ready for paint. So I've got a sanding block here and I'm just gonna scuff up the finish so the paint will have something to stick to. My grill is not in bad shape, so I don't have to take it down to bare metal. I'll we'll just blow off the dust and hit it with a tack rag and we'll be ready. And this paint has very specific mixing instructions. They tell you not to shake it this way, you have to shake it this way. Okay. And we'll just hit it with light coats and long strokes as usual. Okay, the paint has dried, and you can see it's got just a little bit of sheen. It's not super high gloss, um, but it's not flat either. So I think this is a really good match. Next thing we're gonna need is to know exactly where the letters go. Now I just downloaded this off of the 914 World website. Uh, you can see that from the edge, it shows you where each letter should be. Now because this is kind of a, a diamond shaped pattern here, they don't sit exactly where you want them to, but I'll show you when we get into it how we adjust that. But it's handy to have these measurements. Another tip, make sure when you do this that this is facing up, the part that has the barbs that face out. Um, <laughs> don't ask me how I know that uh, if you put all the letters on this way and the barbs are facing down like they are right now, um, your letters are gonna be upside down. You want the flat part to be on the bottom. I'm gonna change that right now. Learn from your mistakes. This episode of my series is brought to you by the letter P. <laughs> These are really nice. Uh, and what we're gonna do is find a spot that's 53 millimeters this way and 81 millimeters from the top. So 53 millimeters is gonna be about there. And then 81 millimeters, 8.1 centimeters. So it needs to come up one hole. So this is what you're gonna find, is that it's not an exact science. So that's about 81 millimeters, and that's about 53. See, if you, they kind of move a little bit up and down, so it's not precise. There's our O. The spelling counts. It also helps to just kind of eyeball them and make sure that they're straight down the line, which they seem to be. Now there's a reason why I did this between two sawhorses. It's so that I can get my hand underneath and put the speed nuts on. So they just have like this little kind of clay-like material and then a metal part at the bottom which clips onto the actual posts for the letters. But sometimes you need to uh, get this clay stuff started because it can be a little hard. You don't want to go too far because that's part of what holds the letters on. But got to get it started otherwise you'll be fighting it all day. I'm not going to push it tight until I know that it's completely straight. Now I'll just put these nuts on all the other posts. Then I'll turn it over and we'll take a look at that. You can see the little nuts with the waxy material or whatever it is. They're on but you can see that they're still movable so I just take a, 
like a socket and press down to get these to really stay. Because once this goes on, you're not going to be able to get to the back of this. All right, all the letters are on, the grill is painted, and everything is looking great. Okay, there's my super shiny, freshly painted deck lid. And here's my new grill with the letters on it. And what's gonna happen is this is gonna go in here. But there is a piece of rubber that goes between the grill here and the painted part, and that's called the welding. So we'll put that on and hopefully we don't get any welds. It's got a little bit of a T profile on top, and then it has a little lip at the bottom, which grasps underneath the grill. To get a precise fit, which is gonna be hard to do if you just kind of measure it this way because you've got all these spikes in the way. To get a precise fit, what I'm gonna do is line this up a little extra. I'm gonna clamp this here so that I can lay this out above the spikes. I'm gonna put another clamp on this side Cut this just a touch long. So now you'll see that the spike is not quite in the middle, like between the top and the bottom here. It's closer to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is just make a little X and let the spike kind of find its own spot in the X. I don't actually have to cut a hole. So let's see here. You can see that's perfect. It's right up against the top of the grill, which is exactly where we want it to be. I'm gonna have to cut a little bit more relief once these are all in, so it sits perfectly flush against the paint. So just to show you what it looks like on the top side, see? It's right up against the edge. That's what we want. My little X marks a spot. And then we push that through. So you see there's a little bulge here in the rubber where the spike popped through. So I'm just gonna trim around that a little bit so that we don't have that kind of bulge preventing the grill from hitting home. I'm gonna use some of this um, 3M black super weather strip adhesive. You need it really on the ends because the ends don't have the, the spike. Then what we need to do is we need to hook the ledge, the little lip on this over the edge and that's really gonna hold it down. These side grills also get the welting, but just along the top and there's not a lot of uh, meat for it to dig into, so we're gonna rely more on the um, weather strip adhesive and the car itself. So we'll line this up and then cut it to size and then pop it on just like we did the others. And you see in here where the metal kind of falls off, you have to trim around that, otherwise it won't fit in the car. So that's what it looks like after it's trimmed with the notches for the body, so this sits flat. There's a little spot here on the end of the welting where the grill kind of tapers and we need to cut that down so that it fits in the little groove here. Now we can put this beautiful new grill with the welting and new letters and everything into the engine deck lid. There are spikes on the side and on the top, so kind of have to, well usually, works best when you angle it in. We're getting there. Okay, those are all in. So now we kind of push to get these back spikes in. A little bit of muscling. There we go. All right, have a look. Pretty sweet. Now, here are the spikes that are through here. The factory had these like push on speed nuts, but um, I'm just gonna use kind of conventional speed nuts. I'll take a little driver there and pop them on, and that's not going anywhere. 
work our way down the way and we're good. All right now, take out the old latch release mechanism, which of course was painted, painted shut. There's a captive nut in there, which we'll just be putting this new one into. There we go. Of course, I have to adjust this, you know, on the car, but that'll be good for now. And now the final part, engine deck lid edge protection. That's gonna go along this edge here and along the sides here. And it's kind of like a uh, wind lace stuff. So it's got metal in there and it pinches along the edge. Just push it in. These are the shorter pieces that come in the kit. Trim this side. So I have my like whisk cutter here. There we go. Beautiful. And there we have it. The grill with the lettering is done and on the engine deck lid. Very cool. Now I just have to put the rain tray on and a few other things and we'll get it on the car when it's time. It looks great. Thanks so much to 914 Rubber for providing so many great parts for this build. I'll put links to the parts in the description so you can find them more easily. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Give it a thumbs up and click the button so you know when new episodes are gonna drop. Thanks a lot for watching. Be safe and enjoy.